Hey, welcome to Renew Church Online. My name is Pastor Trevor. I am honored that you would be with us today online for this uh, service and this, this uh, message. If you would, uh, let us know where you're watching from, who you're watching with. Click that share button and let somebody know that you are watching Renew Church Online. I also wanted just to kind of highlight a couple of other quick announcements uh, for you. Um, there are ways for you to connect with us. There's a, a, a link in the chat below. Click that link and um, just uh, fill that information out for us. If you fill that out, we will send you a gift, especially if it's your first time. We, we want to get some information in your hands and let you know more about what's happening at our church. Also, if you want to get connected in the church through our small groups, our small group ministry is starting up uh, this week, and there are several, several of them that are going to be starting over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so you can go to our website at renew.miami forward slash small groups, and uh, you can find out more information about those. If you live in the Miami area, there are some in person. If you live outside of the Miami area, don't worry, there's some that are on Zoom, and you can check those out and be a part of those. We would love for you to be a part of our small group community. Also, if you do live in the Miami area, we are doing baptism and child dedication on January the 24th. So if you've never been baptized and you'd like more information about that, we'd love to hear from you. Send us a message. Reach out to us. Same thing. If you have a child that has not been dedicated to the Lord, what a great opportunity to do that. And uh, just declaring uh, their dedication, your dedication of your child to the Lord. So we encourage you in that. We're about to go into worship today. But before we do, I just want to thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving to Renew Church. It's because of your faithfulness in giving that we can do what we do here locally, but also even around the world through our online ministry and the work that we're doing uh, by ministering to people 24 hours a day through our, our uh, website, through YouTube, Facebook, and uh, even on our other social media platforms. Thank you for that. If you want to give online, you can go to our website at renew.miami, or you can text the word GIVE or any amount to the number 786-565-1165. Thanks so much. Let's pray together as we prepare our hearts for worship. Heavenly Father, God, again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for this service and this time that we get to gather in this place with uh, our, our uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever they are, uh, in homes and coffee shops, just around the city, around the world. And God, I just pray that you would honor the giving of your tithes and our offerings. Use them for the building of your kingdom, we pray. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man, let's go to worship. stronger 
Hey, thank you again for being a part of Renew Church Online. I'm honored that you would be here with us for this special time. And uh, this is a special sermon series called Dear God. It's a sermon series about praying to God and what that means and what that's like. It's praying to someone and asking that. We're, we're kind of answering and asking and answering the question, how do you pray to someone you can't see or you can't hear? And, and the first question we even a- answered last week is, is, why do I pray? Last week we answered that question, and the answer was, uh, because the Lord is my hope. I looked to uh, a passage of Scripture in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And in 2 Chronicles 20, King Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, he has this encounter where uh, the enemies are coming against him. And there's actually not just one, but there's three enemies that are coming against him. And he prays this prayer. He says, God, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I don't know about you, but that was a prayer that I had even this week. That was something that I was facing even in the midst of the things that were happening in the current events in our city this week. Prayer is that opportunity to get under the things that are supposed to be over you so that you can be over the things that are supposed to be under you. Prayer is this submission to your God, the God of the universe, the God, the creator of all things, so that if you get under him, you can be over the things that are supposed to be under you. And, and so often we get that backwards. We don't allow those things that are under us, uh, that we allow them to come over us, and we need to instead submit to God so that then we can have these other things in our life, our stresses and everything else, to submit to us. We started the 21 days of prayer and fasting this last week. And maybe you didn't join in this last week. Let me encourage you, even this week, now's the opportunity. What a better time than even now to do that. If you haven't gotten your book, we can still get a copy to you. And even if you don't do the full 21 days, that's okay. Start in, jump in with us, and let's finish out this three weeks together. Every weekday morning, we are on Facebook Live at facebook.com forward slash Renew Miami. And we have a 6.30 a.m. prayer time together. And it's a great time and an encouraging time. And I would love it if you would do that. This morning, I want to talk to you about how do we pray. And I want to to kind of think back to what it was like even back uh, maybe pre-COVID days. I, I don't know if you remember back in 2019. That was a long time ago when we used to hold hands to pray. Anybody remember that? Like back in those days when, when uh, you would actually gather in a group or something. And when I was a teenager, I remember in youth group, there were those times when we would do this thing where we would pray holding hands. And um, first of all, it was always awkward as the guy, you were like, I don't know, am I supposed to be the guy holding my hands out, holding the hands, or do I hold the hands in? Like I always got that confused to start with. But then Uh, dealing with um, when it's your turn to pray in the circle. And the youth pastor starts the prayer, and then he says, if you don't want to pray, just squeeze the hand of the person next to you, letting them know that it's their turn to pray. And what would happen? The youth pastor would pray, and then it would get silent, and then all of a sudden you would notice there was kind of some movement around, and all of a sudden you get a squeeze of your hand, and if you're not ready, you squeeze the person next to you's hand, And by the time it gets around the circle, it's the youth pastor's turn to pray again. Uh, Maybe that's never happened to you, but this is that awkward thing that sometimes happens when we pray. 
there's also like maybe uh, those other opportunities, maybe when you got a little bit older and you were a young adult and, and um, you were praying with, with some other people that were, you know, bold prayers and, and, and you had the hard squeeze guy. I, you know what I'm talking about? Like the louder he prayed, the harder he squeezed as if there was going to be some kind of power, more power, if he cut off the blood to your fingers right? Like that's the kind of prayer that, that sometimes ex- that we experience in those prayer circles. Or there was not just the hard squeeze guy, but then you had the dead fish guy, right? And you're not sure if you're holding a person's hand or a dead fish. It's clammy and unmoving. And, and you know, I'm not saying you need to be the hard squeeze guy and break my hand, but at least give me a grip, right? Like give me something to hold on to. Don't just like sit there and leave it like for nothing to grab onto, this message, we're going to talk about how to pray. But before I can tell you how to pray, I want to tell you how not to pray. I gave you some funny illustrations, some funny examples, but here's a, here's a couple of other things that uh, maybe they're still a little bit lighthearted, but let, let me just tell you, like, here are three ways that I don't pray. I don't pray intimidation prayers. And these are those prayers like when you're quoting scripture, like you're Moses' little brother and and you're saying like, Lord, I thank you that you said in Deuteronomy 28 that we are blessed coming in and going out and we are the head and not the tail and I'm calling down angels and I'm binding demons and you know, all of this to say, please bless my turkey sandwich in Jesus' name, amen. Like we don't have to pray that kind of intimidation prayer uh, every time we talk to God. There's another prayer that we don't have to pray. It's the impressive prayer. And, and maybe it kind of goes like this. God, you said in your word that you're Jehovah Nisan. And God, you're so good. You're good to the last drop. And thank you, God, that like a good neighbor, you're always there. God, I love your word. It's so good. It melts in my mouth, not in my hands. God, your blood is thicker than water. Like, you don't have to get into all of these pithy statements when you talk to God. You just talk to God. But then there's this other kind of prayer. There's the intimidation prayer. There's the uh, impressive prayer. But then there's the insecure prayer that sometimes when we go before the Father, where we kind of pray and we're like, God, if you're there and if you're listening and God, if you're able to, well, I mean, I know you're able to, but God, maybe possibly could you kind of maybe think about healing my friend? Like, that's an insecure prayer. These are ways in which you don't need to pray. Jesus set the example for us on how to pray. Jesus gave us some great opportunities to to learn from, and uh, even, in in fact, in his own life and ministry at his baptism. It says in in, uh, Luke chapter 3, it says, When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son with whom I love. With you I'm well pleased. Jesus set that example. Jesus set the example before choosing his disciples. He was praying and it says in one of those days, Jesus went out, Luke chapter 6, he went out to a mountainside to pray. He spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and he chose 12 of them whom he also designated as apostles. I don't know if you understand this, but this was that important. It was that big of a decision that Jesus spent the entire night praying before he made that designation, made that decision on who was going to be his 12 disciples. And then finally, during his ministry, this, this is another example in Luke 5. It says, Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that the crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Yes, he was demanded. There was a lot of demand on him. There was a lot of people that wanted his attention. There was a lot of people that were seeking his help and his healing and his touch. And in those moments, in those heavy moments of his life, he would oftentimes withdraw to private places to pray. Those are examples for us on how to pray. It doesn't have to be by intimidation or impressing God or insecurely coming before God, but just in the same way that Jesus did it, we can 
go to our Heavenly Father. In fact, Jesus set the example by teaching us how to pray. In the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6, Jesus gives us these words, and this is our primary text today. And when you pray, Matthew 6, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. I think I, I, I don't have all the verses on there, and that's my fault. But he says, pray to your Father who is unseen. And, and then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, verse 7, do not keep on babbling like pagans. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need even before you ask Him. So the, this first thing that, that Jesus helps us to understand is, is don't be like the hypocrite. When you pray, don't be that hypocrite that loves to pray standing on the street corner or in the synagogue to be seen by others. Because He says when you do that, you've already received your reward. You've, you're doing it for the wrong intention for the wrong motive. He says, secondly, don't be like the pagan. He says, don't keep babbling like the pagan. In in other words, those impressive words that I was kind of half joking about earlier, uh, they think, pagans will think that if I say certain things, it's like code words for God that he has to automatically answer my prayer in that way because of the words that I say. And Jesus said, don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need even before you ask him. So those are two ways not to pray. Here's a couple of ways to pray. Number one, pray in private. Pray in private. When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. And then your Father who sees what is done in secret, He will reward you. So there's something to be said about just that private moment, that quiet, solitary, solemn place when it's just you and your Heavenly Father praying in private. And it says, when you do that, that's when your Heavenly Father will reward you. In other words, He will hear your prayer and answer your prayer. Secondly, pray with purpose. Pray with purpose. He tells us at this point, in one of the most famous passages in all the Bible, how we should pray. He says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I want to just kind of highlight a couple of these thoughts for just a few minutes. First of all, uh, Jesus starts with our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Like, I, I, I think that there's reason for why in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, right there with do not murder and do not commit adultery, do not steal, and all of these very serious sins, the Lord said to the people of God, thou shalt not take the Lord your God's name in vain. Why? Because his name is hallowed. His name is holy. His name is significant. And we should not just throw that name around as if he's just another being or another God or another something that we can talk to when we want to. No, he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the creator of the universe. He is God of all and in all. I think that's important for us when we go before the throne of grace, that we start with that very feeling and that very understanding of who it is that we're talking to. And it it even reflects even in our posture when we go before him. Because I know for my daughters, when they're asking me for something, I'm, I'm expecting that when they come before me, they come before me with some respect, especially when it's something that's pretty serious and pretty important. It's not just a, a half-hearted uh, you know, request. So when we go before your Heavenly Father, man, like go in reverence before Him, realizing who He is and what He does. His second 
part is, is God, your kingdom come. And we're declaring that. Like, God, your kingdom is going to come on earth. At his, at, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And in other words, he's saying this is going to happen and we've got to declare it. We've got to believe it. We've got to pray it. And we've got to live it out. He's saying we have to align our will with his, not the opposite. We're saying, God, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not my kingdom come. My will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then he goes on to say, and then provide for our needs. Uh, give us this day, our daily bread. Not always our wants. Let's, let's not get that backwards all the time. Let's think about what it is that we're praying for. God, um, I'm not saying that it's not sometimes in his will or his plan for you to have something that you really want when it's the desire of your heart and it aligns with his will, but really the prayer is, God, meet my needs and not just our wants. And forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. You know, Sandy uh, Abbott, one, our small group leader, was, was leading one of the, the morning devotionals on, on Facebook Live this last week during our 21 days of prayer. And one of the things that she said, and I wrote it down because it spoke to me, it really stood out, was forgiveness is the foundation of the relationship. So when we go before the God of the universe, our Heavenly Father, and we say, forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. That forgiveness is the foundation of the relationship. And guess where that comes from? That comes because of the cross of Jesus Christ. It comes because of what Jesus did for us at Calvary. So we're praying and we're saying, God, forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sinned against us. Because that's the foundation of the relationship. In fact, uh, later in the verse Jesus says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive yours. And finally, he says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Man, you know it as well as I do. There is evil in the world, and we need deliverance from it. It's without a doubt a prayer that I pray so often for our people, for my family, for our church. God, deliver us from evil. You know, another way to look at this prayer and, and, and prayer a, a, as a, a question of how do I pray, Pastor? Where, where do I start? You know, I know the Lord's Prayer and I prayed that, but that, that helps me some. But I need to know, like, beyond just praying that prayer as, as a ritual and as a routine, how can I go to God and just talk to God? A simple acronym uh, that you could try is the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S. Here's what ACTS stands for. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Adoration, starting with, God, how much we adore you. I mean, it's, it is the opening to the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be your name. God, you are worthy of our worship and honor and glory, and reverence, and praise. God, we adore you. Uh, it leads to confession. God, we confess the sin in our life. God, we confess the, the, the wrong that's in the world today. We confess that, that we're living in an upside-down society where people uh, live for themselves and ignore God. Like, God, we are confessing the brokenness that we are in and around. It continues in from adoration to confession to thanksgiving saying God thank you for all that you've done for us thank you for delivering us thank you for providing for our needs God the the roof over our head the the the, the clothes on our back the food in our stomachs everything that you've done God we say thank you for the things that you've done and lastly I don't know if you've realized this but it's it's all started with God all these things that that uh, we recognize that he's done and, and uh, those things that are not right and giving thanks for the things that, that he's already provided. And then the last part of the prayer is supplication. God, provide our needs. Not necessarily, as I said before, all of our wants. So, unfortunately, that's not always the way we pray though, is it? 
Like if you think about it, uh, sometimes our prayer looks a little bit more like this. God, give me, uh, please, what I need. Uh, Food on my table, help with my kids' algebra homework, that promotion, the new car, thank you, amen. If you look at that and you break down that prayer that so often I pray and maybe you've prayed before, just God, help me with all of my needs and wants. And by the way, thanks, amen. That acronym is not ACTS. That acronym is SSSSST. I'm trying to get you to change your mindset for a minute and, and go from st to acts. Not God, give me, give me, I need, I want, please, more of, of those things. And by the way, thanks to God, we adore you. We confess what's not right in the world. We give you thanks. And God, please supply our needs. We all have basic necessities, things that things are no doubt important and hard to live without. And although I don't think it's bad to pray for a new car if your old one keeps breaking, I'm sure, uh, I'm not sure that though you need to pray for that luxury car and the ATV and the boat. This this like again goes back to the series in November on Buck Wild. It's really about the heart. Like aligning your will with God's will. It's not just materialistic wants. I don't want to be that kind of person. I don't want to give uh, that kind of cause. I don't want to go to that small group. Like Sometimes it's not just about saying, uh, God, I'm, I'm praying for these things that you would give to me. But it's also, um, sometimes it's saying, God, help me to be more like you. Help me to have more of that kind of heart. Like, start to change my heart to reflect more of what you would have for me. Help me to be a a more mature believer and follower of Christ, a more committed Christian. Help me to to be more faithful uh, to to you and to my family. God, help me to, to find out what it means to be a part of a fellowship and to serve in the community and to serve in my church. God, show me how to my heart can align with yours. You see, when you align yourself with his will, he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalms chapter 37, verse 5, is an amazing psalm that reminds us of this. It says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. I love that passage of scripture, but when you flip that around, and when you say that in the wrong way, or you take that out of context, and you say, God, give me the desires of my heart, which if you're, you're uh, not delighting in him, then the desires of your heart could be a brand new car and a big boat in the biggest house and all of these things. And when you flip that around and you say, God, give me the desires of your heart, you, there's no way that your delight could be in him. When you delight yourself in the Lord, that's the first part. Delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. And that's because those things will line up. Those things will go together. So when you pray, pray for God's will to be done, as Jesus taught us. Pray that God will help you to identify what your true needs are, what your daily bread really looks like, what protection and health and shelter, all those things that he wants to give to you anyways. Pray for those things, but, but it's when you align yourself with his will that you'll be able to find and identify those things. I'm talking to you this week, as we conclude this message about how to pray and how do I pray, considering the words of Jesus, the example of Jesus, looking at the ways in which that we can do these things. And it really is about who you put your trust in. You see, the second after you die, you're trusting God with your entire life. I mean, think about that for just a minute. The moment you stop breathing, it's really no longer up to you. Your eternity is in God's hands. Heaven or hell, it's in God's hands at the moment that you stop breathing. Prayer is the declaration before you die that you're trusting Him with your life right now. Instead of after you die, instead of when you have no choice in the matter, it's prayer that says, God, I want your will to be done, not mine. It's, God, I'm submitting my life into your hands because you are in control and I'm trusting you 
from the, from the beginning of my life, even at this point forward. Prayer aligns you with your Heavenly Father. And man, there's no place I'd rather be. I hope and I pray that this message has been a blessing to you and been an encouragement to you. And I, I hope and I pray that even as we go through our second week of 21 days of prayer and fasting, that you'll jump in, that you'll get involved, that you'll get connected to our, our, our 6.30 a.m. prayer times, that you'll even think about uh, joining one of our small groups, maybe a new believers class if you're, you're new to faith, but getting involved in the life of this church. It's really about this prayer life that's going to allow you to say, no, it, it doesn't mean you have to be like the, 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 you know, the most seasoned Christian or the, the greatest prayer. It's really not about the words. It's about the heart and trusting God with your entire life. Today can be that day for you. Today can be that moment in your life when you even declare, God, I'm giving my life into your hands whether it's for the very first time because this is the first time you've heard anything like this or it's the first time you've decided to do it. You've heard this over and over and over again, but today you've just reached that breaking point in your life. You've reached that crisis point and you're like, you know what? I've done everything in my own strength. I've tried to make it on my own. I've tried to get it all figured out and I can't. So God, here and now, I'm declaring you as Lord and Savior God, help me in this time. Will you repeat this prayer as I pray it out loud? You can repeat it in your heart. Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We recognize that your name is hallowed. And, and uh, God, we are praying your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, as Jesus taught us to pray, we're praying that you would meet our needs, that you'd give us this day our daily bread. And, and we're praying that you would forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God, I, my prayer is that for that person that's maybe prayed this prayer before or maybe for that person for the very first time is praying this prayer, God, I pray that this would be a true declaration from the heart, that God, I'm trusting you with my life. God, I'm surrendering my all to you. I'm asking you to forgive me, to come into my life, and to save me. God, I need you. Like no other time, I need you in my life, and I'm asking you to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and God, because of what Jesus did on the cross for me, dying for me, I choose to live for you. Father, for those people that have prayed that prayer, and for those that have made maybe a recommitment today to follow you, to put the trust in you, God, minister to their hearts, help them to walk with you, to continue to lean on you and to believe, God, that you're with them, that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. God, we thank you for your teaching. We thank you for Jesus' example. And oh God, we're just wanting to follow you in everything that we do. It's not just about our needs. It's not just about our wants. God, it's about your will and your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Man, thanks so much for tuning in for Renew Church online. I'm honored that you would take that time and be a part of that. As I mentioned, get connected into the life of our church through church online. No matter where you live, uh, there are opportunities for you to take a next step.